Hello and welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today, today we're offering you two different spool blocks. One very traditional block and one very modern block and we're having fun with some string piecing. But before we get into that, I want you to go check out Emerald from Quilting with Emerald. Now her channel is new, it's fun, I have never seen her before and we've been looking at some of her videos and she's quite interesting. So if you get a chance to go over there and subscribe, tell her that Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore sent you. It would be a lot of fun for, for us to go help other people, other YouTube channels out. Also, if you want to help our channel out, please share, like, and subscribe. Over half of you aren't aren't uh, subscribed to us that are watching our videos. So, I mean, this is a lot of fun to be doing, but, you know, we need some help. Also, the Facebook group is also in the show notes below. We're having fun and sharing, sharing pictures and rooms and we're laughing and giggling and we have some very talented quilters there. So, if you have the opportunity, come join the Facebook group. And we're also now, we're talking to people about setting the virtual sew date on Zoom for everybody on like either the first Saturday, second Saturday, third Saturday, we haven't decided yet. We're going to put that one out for a vote within our group, right, just to see where everybody wants to set a pattern for, so they can put it into their calendar too, right? You know, just have that, okay, for the first Saturday of every month, that's when our Zoom sew date is. So, come on in. You get a two for one today. Okay, come on in. Let's get some sewing done. Okay, here's your spools. Here's your traditional spool. And here's your modern spool, right? So it, this is a big board. <laughs> big board. It's not all going to fit, but we're going to try. The first thing we want to do is do our flip and stitch corners, right? Because that's probably the most awkward. So we're just going to take the browns out. Okay, do you see this? And we are going to, ah, we got the wrong foot on again. Oh, yay. Ah, we do this all the time, all day long. We end up changing feet, but that's okay. That's okay. We only have to do four of them. So we get this. Now the spool, you got to go from point to point. Now, if you want to measure that and draw your line, that works too. You know, I'm going to wing it because uh, you get really, if you do a lot of this, you get really good at winging it. Oops, there we go. Okay. There. Oh. Okay, now we're going to get the other one down at the end, on the other end, and get these. Okay, so we want to make two like that, and then two going the other way, because we need our spool. Okay, there we go. There. Now, before you cut this off, this triangle off, check to make sure you've got good coverage. Yes, I do. So I have good coverage. I can actually trim this off, and now go the other direction. Right, so now I'm going to go this way, and I'm going to go this way. So I'm going to put it in through this way, like that. So I have the angles going the right direction. Okay. Like I say, sometimes drawing them, sometimes drawing them slows slows you down. But you know what? If it makes a difference, that's good. You get better as you do them. The more of them you do, the better you get at them. In other words, okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to put this one through. And that's going to go this way. Because I need them to V together like an old-fashioned spool. Okay, now, and we'll just run a, let's see, a yellow through, just to move out all of, both of this stuff at once. Okay. Okay, so now, 
that coverage. You've got perfect coverage. Now, if you didn't have good coverage, take it off, sew it again. Take the, the and you just get your stitch ripper and make the commitment, you know. Okay, so one now is going to go here. And the other one is going to go at the bottom. As long as it's all right. Yes, we have good coverage. So let's get this one off. I have discovered I have so many florals in my stash. Wow. Okay. So the next bit of sewing we're going to do is we're going to do the spool top for the modern one. Right? Because that one is a little, you know, it gets a little iffy. Here we go. I'm just going to get that through. Oh, I guess I don't need that, that foot. Now I change feet. <sighs> yes, we change feet. This is our obligatory let's change feet thing. When I do piecing, I do it on bulk, right? So I would have all my piecing done one with one foot one way, and then I would grab the other foot, and I would do a whole bunch more the other way. So this kind of piecing <laughs> makes me a little... Ugh, it takes so long. Okay. So let's just get the other... We're just working on the top of the spool on the modern one, so... Okay. Now, we are going to sew. The next thing we're going to do is sew our string blocks together, because we got the hard bits done. You know, and that's always interesting to do, is, you know, you do your hard bits, and then you move on to the easier bits, and it gets easier and easier as you go. So I'm going to put the top of the spool back. So... The next thing we have to do is this one. Now these are six and a half inch string blocks. And the wilder your strings are, the better these blocks look. And I've done poverty piecing in my string blocks, so that's always a big bonus. So these are trimmed at six and a half, and you'll need two of them for each um, each of the school blocks. Oh, I figured okay. We need some fun. We need some fun. So we're going to do some brown ones. Okay. And now I have run my strings this way. Because I wanted to make it look like variegated thread. So. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Now. Press that any way you want. It won't matter. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to put the sides on. Right? Because the sides go on first. Just, and it gives some place for all these seams to land. Right? So, and you would do that with both your string blocks. So I'm going to put this on the bottom. Put the little side piece on the bottom. Because I, want, I don't want to be flipping my seams. So I'm just going to move this along. Just like so. Okay, there we go. There we go. Yeah, this is always a nice block to work with. It's great for string. String blocks, because it does, it looks like variegated thread uh, spools when you're done. And you want to get the other one going too. So you want to do that one, and you want to do exactly the same thing. Now this one was pressed open on the brown. I'm not sure. It was part of my uh, sunflower quilt, and that's got its own little play, play uh, playlist, all its own. There we go. I should probably press that one open, shouldn't I? Huh? Oh well, we'll press it open. Why not? Press it open real quick. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. There. Okay. There we go. Okay, now we get the other side. Like once we got the sides on, then we can start assembling the rest of the block. Ooh, and it looks like I missed a little bit. 
but that's okay. We'll we'll take it up in the we'll take it up. We'll take it up in the seam allowance. It'll be fine. We want to make sure you're holding on to one end for the seam allowance because we don't want to miss the other side now. You see, we missed a little bit here, so. The reason I'm saying that is because it could be a strain block that's just a little bit out. A little bit too big. That happens a lot. And now, you want to make sure you make the other side, which you do. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> this one is perfect. Okay, let's go flip this over. Yeah, this will be a fun block. These are going to be beautiful blocks. Lots of color going on. It'll be fun. And this is a great way, too, to use up your string. Your string block. And the and cutting for these is so easy. If you've got the string blocks already done, it's like, wow. I have a box of these sitting around. Boxes. Okay, well, there we go. So this one goes. Oops. Oh, sorry. Did I bump you? <laughs> I bumped you really hard. Okay, so we are just going to put the top on the spools. Top and bottoms. We're just going to work on the top and bottoms now. And you'll see why in a sec. Okay, make sure. Okay, there we go. There. So we got this part of the thread done. Okay, we got the bottom of this one done. Right, so it goes on like this. It's easy piecing. Both of these are such easy piecing. And they, you know, they're fun scrap, little scrap left. They really are. Doesn't matter if you go traditional or modern. Now, with the modern one, I use a lot of Aurafil 50 weight in my piecing. So I thought this would be so much fun to do an Aurafil band uh, colors, like by using scrap orange, right? Now, I don't get money from Aurafil, but and it is kind of, this is not a new block. Other people have done Aurifil uh, spools. I just drew my own and I changed the dimensions to suit myself. So it, it works. And I'm just going to press that open just because I can. Press it open. Press this one open. Yeah. Okay. There, uh, the bottom of the old traditional one. These would be fun to do if you had a big stack of them. <laughs> it would be just a hoot. Okay, and this one is just basically a straight seam. Straight seam, get it done, we're, we're good. Okay. Okay. Now that's the top, so we're going to put the tops on, and then the bottoms. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. Now I want, because this, now this is something a lot of people don't get to know. This seam here is a little short, right? It's just a hair short. So when I'm putting this on here, I don't want to line it up this way. I want to line it up so that this edge here and this edge here work and I just deal with a shorter seam on the back, right? You know, so, okay, and I want to make sure that lies nice and flat. Here we go. I might have cut it a little short, but, or it might have gotten too much taken up. Or it might have been some wobbling or something, who knows. But every once in a while, that is something that people need to know, is that this is how, how you do it. Okay, let's get the top of the 
to the modern one. I was going to say traditional, but that's not traditional. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Nice. Let's get okay. Let's get the last of this. There we go. get the bottom on for the 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 modern one there see nice let's see they goes to, it goes together we're just about done we're just about done and we haven't had any we haven't had a hiccup oh my goodness what's wrong there's no hiccup hey hey Okay, so that's both blocks now done. We have the top and bottom on both of them. Now, I have, I'll have these little things I'll make up to just run through real quick. And we'll make a quick little pinwheel because they're cut off and they're a cute little size. And then we'll trim it up and we'll have another little fun little block. Okay, so we'll get to our Tadal moment right away. So these are our spool blocks. Now they're long, narrow, fun blocks, and you could have quite a few of them in like rows alternating, you know, between the, the traditional and the modern. It'll be a lot of fun. And I did make a little pinwheel out of the bits that we cut off the traditional one. Now I'm going to put in the show notes the, the cutting instructions for both, right? However, I'm going to change your cutting instructions to a, a half an inch and a half inch square here so you have the the traditional going out and then up right because that would make it look the does the spool looks really full where the other one where this line here where it intersects with the spool will be moved over right and then out to the edge like halfway through so that you choose then which one you want to make right whether you want to make this spool block or whether you want to make one that looks like it's you know there's more thread but this I thought was a lot of fun and it did use up some pretty cool little string blocks that were kicking around and it looks like variegated thread so yeah it's all been good it's all been fun and I will make use of this little one coming up in our orphan block uh, challenge coming soon to this channel so my until we meet again I hope you have a great week and life's full of fun surprises for you. Okay, take care. Bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for coming along with us on our quilting journey and the YouTube adventure that we're on. We have some wonderful plans for 2023 and it includes a lot more like with the Facebook group and the rooms feature and sewing and hanging out with people. Those monthly Zoom sew dates are still in the works. We have a lot of fun ideas coming up for 2023 and we hope you share, like, and subscribe with your friends. That little notification but button and subscribing to us really helps us out. Commenting helps us out too. So if you like what you're seeing, let us know. Even send us a like a, a heart on the comment. That, that helps so much for us. Okay, you have an absolutely fabulous 2023 and all of our best wishes for you in the future. Okay, take care. Bye.